Turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And uh, I'm going to read verse number 23 through verse number 33. And I appreciate the opportunity to preach to you tonight. Maybe I can give you a, a good encouraging word from the Lord. Matthew chapter number 22. If you would, look at verse number... 23. The Bible says, The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall be of the seven? For they all had it. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, dear Lord, for this time that you've given me to give your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll just give me the words to say. Lord, just calm my nerves. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Just fill me with your Holy Spirit that I can be a good... Uh, a good example, Lord, and just give a good word to your people. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sometimes uh, the, the Sadducees can be confused with the Pharisees. And by way of introduction, I'm going to talk about the, the Sadducees here. And I'm going to give you three things about them. But the Sadducees and the Pharisees are actually very different. They were, in a way... Uh, opposed from each other because you had the Pharisees they were this ultra legalistic group that were a bunch of hypocrites and they were legalistic with the law and they believed they kept the law and the Pharisees had their own special type of clothing and when they would go to somebody's house they would have their own special seat and they believed that they could keep the law and they were sorely mistaken they were a bunch of hypocrites however they believed in supernatural things. They believed in the resurrection. The Pharisees. They believed in angels. However, over here you have the Sadducees. And the Sadducees thought themselves better than the Pharisees. And they looked their nose down at the Pharisees. And they didn't believe in the resurrection. And the Sadducees didn't believe in angels. And we see here in these verses though, and a lot of the verses in the Gospels, where the Pharisees and the Sadducees kind of come together. And that's one thing they had in common was to condemn the Lord Jesus. They didn't like Jesus. He didn't last about three and a half years in his public ministry and they killed him. He probably wouldn't last three weeks now. But by way of introduction, I'm going to talk about these Sadducees. First of all, their de derivation. That's talking about their origin. Where do the Sadducees come from? We're really not too sure, but we think they might come from Zadok, a man who found favor in the days of Solomon over in 1 Kings. But tell you just a little bit about the Sadducees. The Sadducees, they were uh, religious leaders in the days of Jesus. They were government officials. And just like the Pharisees, they weren't a bunch of quacks or uh, they weren't deemed fanatics. They actually had a high respect among the people. And the people actually looked up to them. Like I said earlier about the Pharisees, they had their own uh, type of clothes and they, they were looked up to as re religious leaders. But they hated our Lord and they sought with the Pharisees to kill Him. We see not only their origin but also their deception. If you read in these verses, we're going to get into them in a minute, but you see that the, the Sadducees, they weren't, they weren't asking Christ a question for information. They were asking Him a question so they could trick Him. And their deception was they were trying to take human reasoning and apply it to the Word of God. They were trying to take the truth of the Scriptures 
And if it didn't make sense to them, then it wasn't true. Right, amen. If they couldn't comprehend it, then that's not what that Scripture meant. Right. They said, oh, well, so somebody can raise out of the grave. Well, what about what the law says? That's what they tried to do. It's all about human reason. That was their deception. We have a lot of people like that today. Amen. And you'll find that in your Christian walk. There's a lot of people that they can't make sense of the Bible, so they don't believe it. Amen. They can't make sense of the resurrection, so they don't believe Amen. it. They can't make sense that God created the earth in existence just like that, so they don't believe it. Amen. They'd rather believe in evolution. They'd rather believe in scientists, what they say, because they have fossilized dating and all these other machines, so they put their faith in that instead. But they can't, they, they can't reason on what the Bible says, so they turn away from it. And you'll see as we go on tonight about the Sadducees that there's a lot of people living today who are just like them. And in a way, they resemble a lot of the liberals today. But we see here their der derivation, their deception, and also their decision. The Bible says in Luke 19.47, it says, And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and scribes and the ch chief of the people sought to destroy him. They had a strong dislike for the Pharisees, but one thing they could agree on is they were against our Lord. You know, right. there's a lot of people, they may not like one another, but one thing they can agree on is they don't like Christianity. Amen, brother. They don't like this Bible. Right. They don't like old-fashioned preaching. Amen. They might not be able to agree on much. They might not even be able to stay in the same room with one another. But when it comes to this Bible, when it comes to somebody who lives a clean life for the Lord... They can't stand it. Right, amen. I want to preach kind of a, a play on words. I'm not the first preacher to ever think of this. And um, if anybody ever tells you they got something new, they're lying to you or you're in trouble. But anyhow, I'll um, title my message tonight. Three words, kind of a play on words. Sad, you see. There's reasons why it's sad what the Sadducees believed. It's really heartbreaking if you think about it and if you study it. But sad, you see. I want to talk about... Three reasons why it was sad about the Sadducees. Number one, their, their doctrine, their belief system, their way of life. It was sad because they had religion without redemption. Amen. Look at verse number 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees which say that there is no resurrection. Religion without redemption. Did you know your redemption... Your salvation, your belief in this Bible, your Christianity, your fellowship with the Lord, all of that rests on the foundation of the resurrection. Amen. Without the resurrection, you do not have the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. You have Jesus, but you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's important. We preach about His love. We preach about His loyalty. We preach about His passion, His death, but let's not forget about His Lordship. Amen? Amen. The grave couldn't hold Him. Why? Because He's God. Amen. He's God the Son. He's Alpha and Omega. Right. Last couple of messages, the Lord's allowed me to preach on Him. I've been able to preach out of the, the Gospels. I've been able to preach. And that's just my favorite kind of preaching when you get to preach about the Lord. But anyhow, when you take away the resurrection, you take away... You take away all of our foundation. Hey. The Bible says uh, in Acts chapter 23, verse number 8, says, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And this is over in the book of Acts. The Sadducees had religion. There's people today who have religion, but they don't have redemption. They perform rituals, they have traditions, right. they go to church, they're good for their family. The devil's not opposed against good morals. Good morals are still good in our world. They're good people. And think of all the things that you try to do for the Lord. Think about doing all of that without being saved. It's just impossible to think about, isn't it? I couldn't even I don't even want to imagine doing any of this without the Lord for one second. He's the only reason why any of us are here. Amen? Hey. But that's all they had was religion. All they had was their reputation. All they had was their pride and their titles. They weren't saved by grace. 
two things about religion without redemption. First of all, we see salvation. Uh, just for time's sake, stay where you are. I'll read it. i got it right here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14 says, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. The Sadducees did not believe in the Spirit. That's right, amen. If it wasn't for the resurrection and the Holy Spirit of God, we wouldn't have any of this. Amen. We wouldn't understand any of this. And there's, uh, it's pretty obvious they didn't have the Spirit. We know they didn't have the Spirit because if they right. did have the Spirit, they believe in the resurrection. Amen. Amen. We see resurrection without redemption. Salvation, number two, a Savior. The Bible says in Acts 2.24 and 36, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Not only they didn't have salvation, but they also didn't have a Savior. Where would we be without the Lord? He doesn't just save us and let us on our own. He doesn't just save us and send us somebody, but He does all of that, but He stays with us. And He guides us. And He, he gives us His Word. And He gives us good Christian friends along the way. And He sends us along trails, we, paths sometimes we don't understand. But He's there with us the entire time. These Sadducees, they had all the religion, but they didn't have a Savior. Amen. They didn't have someone when they stood before God Almighty who could say, He's one of mine, my blood covers His sins. And God the Father says, you can come on. But they didn't have anybody. They didn't have that mediator. They didn't have someone to stand next to them. All they had was their sin. We see their religion without redemption. Number two, it's sad, you see, because... They're, they had reasoning without receptiveness. They had reasoning without receptiveness. What that means is they, they could reason with things. They could try to, try to understand things, but they weren't receptive to the Scripture. They weren't receptive to the power of God. A man once wrote a book, you can lead an atheist to good information, but you can't make him read. Amen. And that's the truth. Right. They try to reason. They ask all these questions. They pull out all this stuff from left field. But when push comes to shove, they're not receptive to the Word Amen. of God. Sometimes we get a little, I guess, just kind of down in the dumps because we try to witness to people. We try to talk to people. And they, they want nothing to do with it. These people talk to Jesus face to face right. and still put them to death. Amen. You talk about being blind in sin. You talk about being uh, blinded by their own pride. They sat there and talked to the man who created this entire universe, hey, looked him in the eye, and still wanted to kill him. That's right. We see reasoning without receptiveness. Verse 24 through 29, we, we read those verses earlier. And the. The Pharisees earlier had asked Jesus about paying tribute money to Caesar after his parable about the kingdom of heaven. And then here comes the Sadducees. And they asked Jesus this question, not for information, but for trickery. They wanted to see what his response was going to be. I'm sure they sat around and said, ooh, I'll get them with this one. And I don't know if you've come across this on the public job or not, but when people know you're saved... Sometimes they'll, they'll ask you those questions just to maybe mock you a little bit or just to maybe try to get you in a position where you don't know the answer. Paul's told Timothy about this. He says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. I tell you, if you ever talk to somebody an agnostic or atheist or real religious person, and they ask those foolish questions and you stand there and try to answer all of them, Paul's right. You'll get frustrated with them. You'll, it will. It'll gender strife. That's hatred. It'll gender um, something 
meaning you. You'll get mad at them. And I've preached this before, Brother Paul's preached this many a times. We're not called to debate. Right. We're not called to argue. Amen. And when they asked Jesus about uh, which husband does she go to when she's resurrected, He didn't say, oh, the first one. No, He said, ye do err in the Scriptures. You don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Say, ye err in the Scriptures. You don't know anything about the Scriptures or the power of God. That's right. What they were trying to do, and, and times haven't changed at all when you have somebody trying to trick a righteous man about the law. That's, that, I'm sure that, that happens every day. They still try to pull that one. One of the first things people try to uh, pull on a Christian, they say, well, what about over in Exodus where, where it says this? But anyhow, what they tried to do was they went up to the Lord and they said, uh, Lord, didn't Moses say that when, when a man marries a woman, they don't have any children and the man dies, that she goes to his brother? And then what if that's repeated? It ends up happening seven times. And she dies. She's married to all seven brothers when they were living. That's what, that's what these verses say. When she goes up into heaven, which one... Which one's her husband? I was reading J. Vernon McGee and he said uh, she, she must have been in Hollywood somewhere she was married <laughs> to seven brothers when they were all living. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. But anyhow, Jesus answered and said, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures. That's not how that works. And you see, they were just trying to trick Him. Right. And they were trying to put Him in a bad position. You can be, you can take a stand for this Bible. You can be dogmatic with someone. You don't have to answer that question. You can tell them, hey, you err. You don't know nothing about the Scriptures. That's not what the Bible says. You don't have to stand there and debate with them. You don't have to stand there and argue with them. Jesus stood, looked right at them and said, you do err. Then he, he goes on a little further. We'll get into that later. But we see reasoning without receptiveness. Number one, they were not receptive to the Scriptures. I tell you, people know everything about Christianity, don't they? Boy, they're experts. They can tell you all about the twelve disciples. They can tell you all about the law. They can tell you about Jesus. They can tell you about creation. They can tell you about Noah's Ark. They can tell you about the flood. But one thing they can't tell you about is the Scriptures. Amen. That's the truth about all of those Amen. things. They have their opinions about Jesus. They have their opinions about the flood. They have their opinions about right. creation. But they don't know the truth because they haven't read it. Amen. And Jesus told them, He said, You do err in the Scriptures. I'm sure they probably got most of their information from somebody who took the words of Moses and somebody who took those things out of context. Somebody who uh, didn't believe in the resurrection instead of reading it for himself. That's the problem. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Not the word of some man right. or the teaching of some, right. uh, some other person, but from the truth. You see that they, they weren't receptive to the Scriptures. Also, they weren't receptive to the supernatural. Something supernatural would happen and they would have to bring it down to their level. Oh, that's not real. That's not, that's not true. There's no such thing as a resurrection. There's no such thing as, as angels. There's no such thing as any of that. They tried to bring it down to their level. They weren't receptive to it. They were so high in their own mind they couldn't see what God was trying to show them. But see, it's sad because reasoning without receptiveness. And then last of all, I'll be done. It's sad, you see, because they had recification without Repentance. That word recification, excuse me, that means to correct. Okay? They were rectified, they were they were corrected, but they didn't have repentance. Look over in verse number thirty. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead we have had he not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. They were corrected. They had a but 
they didn't repent. You see, what they tried to do was they took their own reasoning, they took their own understanding, they tried to trick the Lord with it, and He corrected them. He quoted the Scripture to them. Amen. And He spoke on authority to them. But they didn't repent. They didn't turn from that. How many times, I know I've been speaking a lot about the world, but just ourselves as Christians. How many times have we sat in these pews and been corrected but didn't repent over that? How many times did the preacher get up here and preach about faithfulness? How many times did the preacher get up here and preach about prayer and reading our Bible and, and edifying and encouraging the brethren? Amen. And how many times has he got up here and preached about tithing and what we're supposed to do in the church and how we're supposed to help one another and how we're supposed to forgive and let go of things. And God sits there and He uses the man of God and the Word of God to correct us and He steps on our toes and He convicts us and we get up, we go home, and we don't do nothing about it. And these Sadducees, they were so full of pride, they were holding on to their own teaching. Right. When they went up to the Lord, they said something to Him. He quoted the Word of God to them with authority, and they turned around and they still sought to kill. Them. That's right. Amen. They were corrected. They were rectified. They had rectification, but they didn't repent. We've, we've preached this many times. You don't get saved in parts. Right. You don't accept Christ and then repent later. You ask of forgiveness of your sins and accept Christ. Same, same way with being a Christian. You can't serve God now with, with sin still in your heart. You can't do that. Amen. After we get saved, God forgives us, saves us of all of our sins, and then uh, everything's going good and all of a sudden something creeps in and you know we're living in this flesh and we might have a little bit of anger or strife or a little bit of envy in there or something happens somewhere we get a little hard, we can't serve God like that. And we're corrected when we come to church. We sit under good preaching, but yet we don't repent for it. And that's exactly what those Sadducees did. They stood and looked at the truth. We see two things here. Number one, under rectification without repentance, there's a simplicity in verse number 30. I'll never understand all this Bible. Hey. But there are principles of this book that are just so simple. Hey. It's just so simple. I was thinking about something earlier that I was having trouble with. And you know the flesh. You want to go and you want to invest in some book or you want to go talk to somebody for advice. And finally, something just hit me and said, why don't, why don't you just pray about it and let God take care of it instead of trying to fix it on your own. Just pray over it. It's simple. It's simple. Stay in God's Word. Pray over it. Get close to Him. He'll take care of it. But it's so simple, but yet we don't want to listen to that. Just like these Sadducees, we, we want to be corrected. We, we hear the truth, but we don't repent. We, we don't want to listen to it. And that's what happened to them. They heard the simplicity of the Lord's teaching. He said in verse number 30, For in the resurrection they neither marry." And don't get confused with this. It says, Nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. That does not mean when we die, we go up to heaven and become angels. That's not what that verse means. Please don't miscommunicate that. Okay? No such thing as lady or baby angels. Amen? The Bible talks about them as masculine. Okay? None of us turn into angels. We have souls. Okay? We go up to heaven... Will be redeemed. We can sing a song the angels cannot sing. Amen. But he's relating us to the angels, meaning the angels are in eternity. They're not married. Okay? So when we get up into heaven, there are people here on earth that have been married multiple times because they become widowers or widows, and God gives them another good spouse. So when they get up to heaven, that doesn't mean they're married to their first spouse. That means that they're just not married because they're in eternity. It's Amen. simple. Okay? And Jesus gave that to them. It's so simple. It's so simple to understand. But yet, they still want to hold on to that. No, 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 that's not, no, he's, he's wrong. You, there's still seven husbands and still, I'm sure they, they had their own reason for that. We see the simplicity. And then to, to close us out tonight, we see the statement. 
verse 31 and 32. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at His doctrine. He said, did you not hear God when He said He's the God of Abraham? Did you not hear Him when He said He's the God of Jacob and of Isaac? Well, them men have passed away years ago. But God's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. They're, they're somewhere else right now. Amen. He's not the God of the dead. The Bible says the people were astonished at this doctrine. And yet these Sadducees, it's sad you see because they, taught, they were taught the truth. They taught to the Savior and yet they were corrected by Him but they didn't repent from it. And we can really learn something from the Lord when we look at this story. Because when we're faced with these obstacles of, of religious, of false religion and cults and these evolutionists and agnostics and atheists and people who they try to take human reasoning and put it on the bottom. And they try to understand everything. They have all these questions and they want to get you here, they want to get you there. Use the Lord as the example. Okay? You just quote the Bible, stand your ground hey. and be a witness. Hey. Okay? You know, like I said earlier, we get all upset when we can't win somebody to the Lord. And here Jesus told them time and time again the truth and they still didn't get it. We see the Sadducees. The Sadducees, number one, they had religion without redemption. Number two, they had reasoning without receptiveness. And number three, they had recification without repentance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank You for this day. Thank You for all Your many blessings. Thank You, dear Lord. There was a time where you did come to us and we were shown the truth, dear Lord, and you revealed to us that we were sinners and that your son died for our sins and that without his shed blood that we couldn't go to heaven, that we would die and go to hell as lost sinners. And we thank you, dear Lord, for convicting of us of that sin. And thank you, dear Lord, for saving us the first time we called on you. We pray, yeah. Lord, Amen. if there's anyone here tonight, God, that doesn't know for a fact that they are saved, dear God, that you put strong Holy Ghost conviction on them, Lord. And just save them before it's eternally too late, God. And just help us, Lord, and give us strength to know that when we do call on your name, you do save us. And we thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.